broadcasting from Millvale Studios. You are listening to Funny Money on the River's Edge Network. I'm your host, Tom Henry, and uh, with me is uh, your other host, Matt Wolfarth. Yes! And our producer today, James, who James is uh, producing us for the first time. He doesn't look as much like Jesus today. He no, looks, definitely, looks like definitely a, a different look. Yeah, he's looking for like a Pearl Jam lead singer. <laughs> Yeah, that's we're gonna great. get you a lot of dates, James. We're gonna get you. Like, <laughs> yeah, right in here. Just, just the face of the operation. Oh my <laughs> god, that show's so hot. It's good. This is. It's not it's as like hot as usual, but it's not bad. But we wore the wrong clothes for sure. Like, we got to. We have to consult. Go ahead. Go ahead. Make I your love flannel it. remarks. Yeah, Tom, Tom's <laughs> wearing a flannel winter collection. <laughs> that's not true. Come on. This is like. I know it looks Paper flannel. Thin, but I, I actually had flannel. I have flannel pants. I still wear. And I love them just because they're so comfortable. And you know I'll what? wear them in summer. I got I don't a shirt care. for six dollars. I believe it. I love Old it. Navy. No, I don't mean I believe it. I think it's an awesome shirt. Well, well it was in the uh, super sale rack. I think because it's so red, it's yeah. a little jarring for some people. Yeah, it's, but I'm like, I don't care. You don't care. <laughs> We're going with red. We're bright and <laughs> vibrant. It's an action color. We're look at me. Look at me. I like it. Well, speaking of action, what's our action this week? Okay, this week, our <coughs> action is the insurance companies. Now, we're not doing, uh, there are some big insurers uh, that we are not doing because we're not doing like uh, Geico. types. We're, well, right, but Geico is an asset that's ultimately owned by Berkshire Hathaway, okay. which is, you know, a company that uh, is mostly an insurance company. But actually, their biggest insurance business is a is reinsurance. Reinsurance? I think that's what I need when I get kicked off, right? Reinsurance. <laughs> like I, I gotta get some reinsurance. <laughs> reinsurance is the, are the insurance companies that insure the insurance companies. Oh wow! They're the reinsurers. Well, how big is their deep doctor? pockets for well, that? Who, who reinsures the reinsurers? Is this like a never-ending re- re- <laughs> Oh yeah, who who reinsures them? <laughs> Good. Yeah, I know, I know. Right. I, I thought about that, but like, uh, no, that's where it stops. I, I, I think <laughs> that's where it stops. It has to stop somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's unlike where it pie. Stops. I don't know of any reinsurance company that is reinsured. That reminds me of my joke about rehab, right? Like they should tell us how many times somebody's been to rehab so we know their chances of success. Like here goes <laughs> here goes Aunt Kathy to re 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 rehab. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not taking the over and under on that. I don't think she's gonna pass this time. Right, right. They should have to say it how many times. Uh it, it's like, yeah, oh, um, you know, lead singer for Stone Temple Pilots, like uh Oh yeah, I'm going back to re 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 re. Or have so we'll see in two weeks. I couldn't take the pressure. Um, so all right, the first one I want to talk about is MetLife, uh, and everyone recognizes MetLife with the Snoopy logo. Uh, it, it's well advertised. They actually um, have a Snoopy float every year. And did the they have the float parade. at the hockey game? That doesn't make sense to me. A float at the they hockey had the Snoop. The Snoop float at the hockey game, like uh, I, I, in the finals. Yes, uh, Snoop float. Or oh, the Snoopy float, it. the Snoopy. Blimp. Oh, the Snoopy float. Oh, the okay. Snoopy blimp, as opposed to a Snoop blimp, which would be different. Yeah, Snoop that would be much <laughs> different. Now I have a lot of theories on that, but I was always saying, like, why would they take it to a game that you can't see anything? Like, I understand a football game. Hey, let's go up to the blimp for an update. Hey, we're up here in the blimp, and we can see a car getting broken into. Back to you, Bob. <laughs> right. Like, I, and that's a job for a pot smoker, right? A blimp pilot. Uh, a blimp pilot. Right, uh, yeah. Definitely. You don't have no, to it's do like too a floating many party. fast moves. You don't have to, like, what, what does it go, like, 10 miles per hour? 35, I believe. Really? And they were first invented, this is a little trivia that you might not know. They were invented as a warship. Uh, oh, that's going to scare the crap out of someone. <laughs> like the giant yeah, balloon. right. <laughs> let's fill, a, let's fill in a floating substance with a flammable explosive gas well it used to be flammable right it was hydrogen originally yeah. like that's where the hindenburg went down oh, okay but now it's helium so it's not right I, 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 is that what it is i, I hope it yeah is. that yeah. would have to be yeah the, it's because the hindenburg didn't really work out <laughs> yeah, you know that story right uh you know a lot of their ideas at that time didn't really work out helium <laughs> so okay all right let's get back to met life in 1863, all right, now, I, I noticed that, like, um, I'm all sitting. three of these companies that we're going to do tonight sort of were born in the same era, which is the, the late 19th century. 
All right. Uh, but this is the earliest of the three. 1863. 1863. You might recognize that as a year in which the country was at war. Was it the Civil War? Yes, it was. Wow. In 1863, a group of New York City businessmen raised $100,000 to found the National Union Life and Limb Insurance Company. <laughs> Life and Limb. <laughs> I love that. It was formed to insure soldiers against uh, disabilities and sickness caused by the Civil War. You know, so uh, if you, I, I mean, the, the casualty rate was extremely high. And um, uh, the you know the rate of uh, actual death was extremely high too. So how would you even figure that out though? Because that seems like a losing proposition. You know you're going to be playing tons of claims. It's like saying, "Hey, we're going to start an insurance company before Hurricane Ivan." Yeah. Well, there, there are a lot of uh, what you need uh, when you're an insurance company. You need an actuary. You need someone who can mathematically look at the numbers. You know, figure out what the averages are uh, for human beings given uh, their circumstances, and and then set the premium uh, to Based to on. right to be uh, adequate to fund those claims when okay. they occur. All right, but it certainly helps to spread that risk around. You know, it, it yeah. would stink to be an insurance company like, and you just have one client uh, because. Then it's all like uh, ba it's uh, it's just based on the one peculiarities of that one guy. Whereas, if you have a million customers, then you can pretty you can accurately predict more assess accurate. it's going to be very close to the average, you know, overall. Yeah, I right. Like that. the lifespan, for yes. example. Right, but you might have a fluke guy who lives to 105, right? But yep. uh, actuarially, actuarially, they consider uh, the uh. end of life to be. 100 years. There is really zero percentage. Have they seen my eating habits? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The maximum. Oh, the maximum. Human life. Okay. 100 years. Okay. Okay. That's not the average. That's the maximum. Oh, that's so. The... They consider anything over 100 to be so rare that they don't even count it. Is that still the case, though? Because I heard there's a lot more since. I, I think you're right. Since that they are, I don't want to say the wrong word. No, that they are. To, uh, centenarians? Uh, centenarians, yeah. Uh, I was going to say centenarians. Yeah, there are, right. I, I mean, as our healthcare gets better, as we understand more about diet and exercise or whatever, I think you'll see more and more of those. And, and they will have to adjust that, uh, the insurance companies, to account for that. But right now, we're status quo at 100. <laughs> right. If I live to be 100, do you think you'll live to be 100? No, they're saying the maximum a person uh, can live well, is 200. I know, but I, I would love to live to be 100, just to say it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I would love to live. Uh, you know, you know what you can get away with at 100? life was decent. If you know what you can get I away with. I know one thing you can get. You could poop anywhere. People don't even care. He's 100. Oh, I don't know. I would probably <laughs> care if some 100-year-old dude were <laughs> so, pooping someone in my lawn. Someone has to lung. clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my Herb front lawn. grandpa! <laughs> Come on, man. Um, <laughs> that was pretty me. funny, Curb Your Grandpa. All right, so. No love in the room tonight. Okay, Life, <laughs> life and Limb Insurance Company. All right, so it was basically there to, um, you know, insure against uh, injuries and, and death in the Civil War. So they were probably paying pretty high premiums comparatively at that time based on the fact we were at war. Well, it, it well depending on what the payout was. Oh, okay. You know, so uh, I assume they had no Confederates. I was wondering about that. Like, did they insure the other side? I doubt it. Um, you know, I want to tell you, I did have a Confederate hundred dollar bill somewhere in my house, and I don't know what it would be worth, but it was pretty cool to see. That's wild. I bet it's worth a lot. Um, so after the war, the company changed its name to Metropolitan Life Insurance Company, something a little less gory. And uh, shifted its focus to life insurance. Um, and so, uh, the, the, a weird thing, uh, like back then, you could actually, you, you could just go to another country and look at the way they were doing things. And then if you brought it back here, you were like doing a, something radically new. A genius. So this guy, uh, the president of uh, MetLife, Joe Knapp, in 1879, went to Great Britain and uh, saw that... Um, 
they used uh, the, in their insurance industry um, something that he brought back and we call uh, like working man's insurance programs or industrial insurance programs. Okay. Right. And what those are, uh, and I didn't even know this, that, that is that workers would pay like a little small premium either on a weekly or monthly basis. And the insurance guy would go around house to house and collect the premium. I remember hearing of that. Yeah, it was that like was the milkman, big... right? Like he would. Yeah, just give yeah. Us, like hey, like the, yeah. actually, like the paper boy. You owe me a buck, or you owe me two bucks, and then you get your stub. Right. So it it wound up being great for them. Um, it made a lot of money because they're they're selling this mostly to like middle class and lower middle class, mm -hmm. and uh, they found out, you know, that these poor working people would have uh, would lapse on their policies. So much that only one in twelve ever had to pay out. So, so they just got free money. They up front. Get, they're basically collecting money. Yeah, um, and uh, I think I'm starting that. It's going to be called Matt Life and Limb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to start in Melville. Well, yeah, let's go door to door in right? Melville. <laughs> Collecting. I, I got your back if you die. <laughs> Do you remember that people um, would pretend they're not there? Collecting. <laughs> So that was the idea. You go around, and and, and this was you know wildly successful. Um, but in in 1907, they did uh, make some uh, rules uh, that made it harder. Rules are nice to uh, to gouge the customer. You know, oh, so, to make it the, the further gouge the customer. Well, well, to make it so, <laughs> no, 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 no. They they made it so that the customer could actually uh, get a payout. You know, even if they had some small lapse or something, building like, that. like and cash value they, or something. They just like. uh, had a. Oh, you mean the cash surrender value? Yes. The cash surrender value, for those who don't know, is the value of an insurance policy uh, at at a given time. If if you were to give it up, how much would the insurer pay for that? So that that's what that is. Like it, you can sell it back to the company for a certain amount. And that's the cash surrender value. Uh, and it's always much less than whatever the payout is, uh, okay? Because you know you're still alive or whatever. <laughs> you're still alive. <laughs> oh, I knew there was a catch. The nerve. <laughs> I never understood credit and credit life insurance, right? Like, why do you need credit if you're dead? Why do you need credit? Credit life insurance like pays off your bills if you die. Oh, uh, but I mean, maybe your kids would be stuck with the bills. I don't know. Oh, really? Maybe your I thought wife they couldn't would be transfer. Stuck. Like, if your name wasn't split on the card or something like that, it wouldn't. Like, they couldn't take it to, like, your next of kin legally or something like that. I could be entirely wrong, but you mean that if my your dad name is my debt, but if you're married, you're considered one in the eyes uh, of the law, right? I mean, correct. you're just one, one taxpaying entity. But otherwise, you have to list a beneficiary. Uh, yeah. Um, or beneficiaries. Now, so, uh, <clears throat> the, you know, insurance is is kind of a weird business in the sense that it's got uh, two facets to it. Uh, one is you, 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 what we discussed. You have the actuaries. You figure out how much you should charge for the premium. You go and collect the premium. The other is what do you do with the premium when you have it sitting in your pocket? That's a good point. You invest it. Okay? Invest it. You use that money to make money, okay? And that is the bulk of the return that insurance companies earn, okay, is, is from their investing. Now, uh, the trouble is you got to make sure you have enough money to pay off claims when they come. So you, you want to invest pretty cautiously. It's kind of so like they, a bank, right? They I tend mean... to be very frugal. Yes, it is, it is like a bank in many ways. But they tend to be... Uh, more cautious than a bank you know okay. they're Just not going to lend to individuals who are starting a business you know they're um, they're, they're not going to take on high risk they're not, not, in, not that banks really are these days either but they're investing in people that can you know but they'll invest in stocks and bonds but mostly bonds you know oh really so they uh, want that three they just want to beat inflation a little bit by a little bit well uh they <laughs> They want as much as they can get. They, without, they, and it's without, not like, oh, I'm going to just try without and take a little risk, bit right? of money. No, they just want as much money as they can. But they, 
at the same time, you have to be cautious because if you invested it all in stocks and the stock market tanked and the, and there was a huge hurricane at the same time, <laughs> you are leaving town trouble. on a little boat. Yeah. So they do tend to invest in fixed income. And, and now this is the downside about today's environment is that rates are very low. Okay? Correct, yeah. So, you know, like if you buy a, a 10-year bond, you get less than 2% a year. Yuck. You know, in fact, it's more like 1.65%. Oh, right my now. goodness. Yeah, so you get really low interest. Is it worth it? Does anybody do that right now? Like, there, it, it, That's an indi- the, the The reason the rate is where it is is because that's an indication of – of the demand for it. Oh, wow. So, yes, there are tons of people buying it. The more oh, people buy it, the lower the rate goes. Okay. But it's the yield based on, goes. Right? Yeah, so the it's yield. based on, you know, most people are doing, is this a part of my portfolio, right? Like a I, percentage. Well, I, I think a lot of the buyers for that are other governments, you know. That's that's the hugest. W- what are you hearing here? Are you hearing what, some weird noise? I thought it was haunted. <laughs> <laughs> The studio Did you is something? haunted. You... I, I hope not. <laughs> I, heard, I heard, hey, is anybody here? <laughs> I, heard a, I heard a woman's voice. Did you, hear no, you didn't no hear that? No way, no, man. Oh, my God, dude. I Your mind you're is gonna haunted. You're going to have me looking over my shoulder all night now. She's haunted. <laughs> no, you I, looked, I heard it, and then I saw you look, and I thought you heard it, but you didn't hear it. Wow, dude. She's just haunting you. I'm never eating hot dogs at lunch again. <laughs> Okay, so I got it. Makes sense. So Conservative. In a low rate environment, it's it's very hard for them because they you know, they'd much rather be making five percent than two percent. Yeah, and they need that ten year to go up to it, like four or five. So it's a low it's a time of, you know, lukewarm profits. Where do they go when the rate's too low? Do they go to like real estate? Like real estate seems pretty safe to me. Mm, yeah, well, except I mean two thousand Seven that oh, real yeah. estate was the worst thing. Well, besides that, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. not. But that's not the only time real estate's tanked. But for the most part, it goes up by far. I mean, the stock market also goes up for the most part. Uh, so I, I guess what you would do then, I, I mean, <clears throat> if you if the rates are so low, you you don't. There really isn't that many places they can go. They could go to the stock market, but you'd have to be very careful, extremely diversified. What would you do if you were running it? If you were, it's like Tom Henry, you know, as, national limb and what's it okay, called? Life and limb. Right. Tom uh, Henry as life far and limb. as I can tell, uh, I would not run it significantly differently than they appear to be running it because it seems to make sense. I would still be cautious like them. I wouldn't, hmm. uh, you know, uh, try and shoot the moon and go in, into stocks and then... Uh, risk has that ever happened where someone says i'm just gonna take my shot oh like, my gosh uh, aig do you remember uh, oh yeah AIG had to get bailed out oh yeah you know what i think even matt life got bail got a bailout oh really yeah so, so, so no of course yes it has happened and okay. prudential i remember they were struggling one time too they might have had a bailout we kind of had a little uh, <laughs> fiasco so, yeah things can get bad and they do go under um you know there have been a lot of insurance companies that have come and gone so uh, it, it, this uh, MetLife, though, it, is mostly, uh, you know, its biggest th- component is life insurance uh, okay. uh, of sales. But, but it has a very diversified portfolio, even so. I mean, of products that it sells. It insures cars and everything else, property and casualty. Um, so, oh, yeah, about going back to the working man's policies where they go around and Mm-hmm. Collect a thing every the week. one in twelve. By eighteen eighty, they sold over two hundred and fifty thousand of those. Oh my goodness! Okay, <laughs> and that was a million dollars in revenue back then, which was huge. Yes, at that time. Uh, okay, by uh, by nineteen oh nine, MetLife had become the largest life insurer, and it still is to this very day. All right, the largest. Let's the- talk about. Uh, the numbers here. Yes. Now, this is a stock that trades for $42.55. What's the symbol? M-E-T. Met. That makes sense. And that's down from $54 in 2014. And uh, generally, the reason for the decline is what I was just telling you. 
that uh, it's been hard to make money because of uh, rates being low. And uh, the one good thing is that the Fed has been making noise about raising rates. And it actually raised rates a quarter of a point last year for the first time. And who knows how long. I mean, since before the crisis. So uh, it, it, if you think the Fed is going to raise rates, uh, and by that I mean the Federal Reserve, and Janet Correct. Yellen is the head of the Federal Reserve, <clears throat> uh, then this could be a um, money maker. It could be good for the, th that would be good for this stock, no so, doubt. So you're looking six months to twelve months down the line. Like However, if you think there's going to be like three raises, I don't know. You know, I really don't. I really don't think. I, th based on the last comments and, and her testimony in front of Congress even today. Um, I, I, it sounds very dour. It sounds like she thinks uh, really? th there's a, a, a lot of risks to the economy and that long-run growth is going to be really slow. So I don't think she's going to raise rates anytime soon. But doesn't that make her look bad, though, that, that she raised them once and then they're not raising them again? Sort of. But no. they did say that they would probably do that, though. Okay. Uh, like wait a long time between rate hikes. Um, so by 1909, oh yeah, I already said that. Okay, a PE, okay, the PE on this company is 9.13, quite low. Yep. Dividend yield, 3.76%, quite wow. nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Return on invested capital, 5.57%, quite low. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, they have a low invest, investment return. <coughs> uh, Net debt to equity, 18.5%. Excellent. Very strong balance sheet. Uh, earnings per share expected to increase 19.25%. Wow. Excellent. Uh, and, you know, uh, th this is... Could I go back to your rule from last week? So based on three points of growth, yeah, that would be six points. That would average, that would take you up to 11. So you would actually be over the nine. Right, uh, uh, oh, nine. right. Yeah, you'd be over the nine. So it, I agree with that that assessment that by the numbers, this is a good buy. The only but but uh, but the reason why I don't run out and buy it is because of what I said, that I think rates are liable to be low for a longer time than the market thinks. And therefore, this stock won't do that well because of that. So it's just going to stay. So it's going to stay flat. Right. I mean, for as far external as earning. reasons, I, I, even though. Internally, these numbers look great, and I like the company. Well, I like that distinction. It's because of what you know the Federal Reserve is doing and economic conditions, broader economic conditions. So um, that's why I wouldn't buy it. You're not buying it. No buy. Yeah. No. But but I, I I I do like it by the numbers. So if Janet, yeah, if I were to change my opinion and start to think that they're going to hike rates soon. That's I'd come a, that's back a to this. this okay. Yeah, take revisit it. If you think rates are going to go up, this is a buy. Good All right, point. that was an interesting one. I didn't yeah. think it was going to be interesting, but it was very interesting. Okay, now you surprise me every week. <laughs> now, I what's coming? What? Uh, now, let's take wait. a break. Do we have to? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Wait, before we get into our next one, which is going to be prudential, um, we're going to take a quick break uh, for our sponsors. Hey, this is Matt Geica, the host of your alternative sports talk program on the River's Edge. It's called Geik's Got Game, and it's every Friday at 7 a.m. I'll give you a peek behind the sports media curtain, zoom out for the big picture, and always obsess over the details of the games, teams, and players we love or love to hate. That's Geik's Got Game every Friday at 7 on the River's Edge. Okay. We are back to discuss Prudential. Um, now, Prudential is another one of these stocks that's come down quite a bit, uh, just like MetLife. Um, it, it's down uh, from 91 in 2014 to $74 now. What, say that again. It's down from $91 a share in 2013 to $74 okay. a share today. Okay. Okay. Uh, Prudential... Uh, was founded by John F. Dryden, D-R-Y-D-E-N. Uh, well, actually, he founded 
the Widows and Orphans Friendly Society. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a perverted Widows, York, widows and Orphans. They, always, they had these goofy names back then. I mean, but uh, that, that name was, you know, changed uh, pretty quickly to the Prudential Company of America. Um, and John F. Dryden was elected U.S. Senator for New Jersey. Uh, subsequent to founding the company. And then after serving his term, he went back to uh, serve as president of Prudential. And he and his son served, I think, uh, as the presidents until 1922. Oh, my goodness. Okay, but They had a pretty good but life. But he died before that. Okay, yeah. Yes, in fact, I'm glad you brought that up. When, when Dryden died in <coughs> 1911 from pneumonia following the removal of gallstones two weeks earlier. I had those removed. Oh, really? I had a gallbladder removed, but back then it was different. They tried to remove the gallstones. What? What is a gallstone? Oh, my God, it's painful, dude. It's the most... It's a, it does like a great impression of a heart attack. So um, gall, you have bile, so it, it you use it to digest fats, right? right? So, like, what will happen is a stone will get caught in that little canal, and then it'll just cause severe pain. It feels uh, like a heart attack. <coughs> and uh, But I thought it was a heart attack, but it was gall. And then they, you can't eat anything because anything fatty, you just... Oh, wow, yeah. That you sucks. just sit in pain. But you're okay now, I mean... Yeah, now they remove it with a straw. Like, it's crazy. Like, three little things, you feel great the it, next day. You wake up oh, and... Who has to suck it out? I don't know. I'm not. I don't make... I'm underneath... <laughs> The yeah, anesthesia. We're, we're so wrong. But I'm telling you, the recovery on that was amazingly fast. Like the next day, you said, "Thank you." It's like God did it. Like you're just yeah. like, "Oh my God!" They're like, "Bring I love out you. the like, yeah, you're gallbladder right. elf." You can literally like, go back to work. Out of you. <laughs> yeah, you can go back <laughs> to work, and like it's it's not that painful. You might take, you know, I, you don't really need a lot of pain pills or anything, but you just go right. You could go right back to work the next day. Nice, that's awesome. So okay, yeah. So he died after that. Uh, but he got pneumonia. Um, but his estate at that time, 1911, was valued at $50 million. Holy smokes. What would that be the equivalent today? I, I don't know. I mean, you can imagine that would I, – I would think that would have to be, you know, at least $130 million. Oh, no. No, I'm, I'm best. I was no, wait, wait. a billion. Maybe a, uh, Actually, a, you might be right because of the 70s. There's so much inflation. Yeah. I don't know. It could it could be a lot more. I would think it, it was would a like lot. It was a million not. would be a lot of money back then, right? Unusual, very rare to have that much money. So this guy uh, did very well with the insurance business. Uh, he uh, also had a, another business too, but it wasn't as successful. All right, now Prudential is divided. It's got three main divisions: uh, U.S. Retirement Solutions and Investment Management. U.S. Individual Life and Group Insurance, which you can imagine, uh, and uh, international insurance. All right. Now, uh, the focus on retirement is sort of what distinguishes Prudential from MetLife, for example, uh, that they, they provide more uh, retirement insurance. Correct. They, they're more financial. They're more state planning like, you know, I mean, they're, I guess, well, more, compre security more comprehensive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably, yeah. Uh, so they, they've got a PE of 6.91, dividend yield of 3.78%, very nice. Uh, return on invested capital of 8.1%. Um, net debt to equity of 27.3%. That's still strong. Uh, and, but... So on those numbers, it looks very good. P is below the ROIC. Dividend is very nice, and the balance sheet is strong. But analysts expect the earnings to drop 4.9% this year. So they're not um, – they disappointed earlier, the, the last quarter. Uh, and, you know, I think it's it's still the same thing, that they can't – make good money on their investments. Their investments, it's all. Right. Now, MetLife, on the other hand, um, uh, surprised positively last quarter. So they, they did find a way to squeeze did, a little more than anyone expected. Did they out. state a reason why they surprised? 
Um, no. I, or, you know, if I had read the earnings report, it would have, but I didn't get that far. Okay, no worries. Sorry <laughs> to push on. That's okay. Uh, all right, so now, uh, in terms of size, this one's smaller than uh, MetLife. It's a $32.6 billion market cap, which is a huge company. But MetLife is a $47 billion market cap. Yep. Um, okay, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll take one more uh, quick so, break for promo. So this is a no, just the answer. Uh, okay, yeah. And so what is the symbol? My answer on this, although it's similarly tempting, the symbol is PRU. It's, it's almost as good a buy as MetLife here. It's similarly tempting, uh, but uh, it, just because I don't think rates are going up soon. You don't? Okay. If I started to think that, then, then I, I would get interested in this. All right, so what we're going to take, I know we, we just kind of had a break for promos, but we're going to take one more quick one, and then we'll come back with Chubb. Chubb! Which is an interesting, and I'm not talking about, you know, the stuff that hangs over your waistline. Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, my muffin pop. <laughs> uh, we're talking about the insurer, Chubb. 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 Okay. I hear so their name everywhere. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll tell you about After it. After this break. All right. Hi, I'm Mike Storer, host of the Awesome Cast, which you can hear right here on River's Edge Radio. We're talking tech, getting geeky every week with people from Pittsburgh in the industry. Go check us out, awesomecast.net, or listen to us right here on River's Edge Radio, Thursday mornings, 8 a.m., after Funny Money. Yeah. We're back, and we're going to cook out tonight. I still have, oh, we're back. I still have hamburger <laughs> all right, and buns. All right, I'm going and over corn. to your house. I have corn, too, fresh corn. Awesome. Corn off the cob. All right, you're going to feed me after this. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to bu- rebuild our friendship. <laughs> Yeah, food. after tonight, man. Through food. Last Don't night, I thought I let you down. Or Monday night. We <laughs> no, were, we're good. I thought I was right. ornery. We're good. Uh, okay, so Chubb. Chubb. Love the name. Yeah. I have to tell you. It's just <laughs> I like, love the name, you too. You got to go with Chubb. <laughs> you got to go with Chubb. Bulletproof <laughs> marketing. <Yeah. laughs> so what is a Chubb? Don't even know. You know there's questions right away. But go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Chubb is a, a stock that has defied the trend of the insurance industry in this low-rate environment uh, because it's gone up, right? Um, and I'll talk a bit about why I think it's gone up. All right, it's gone from 102 to 125.54. Right? Wow. And that gives it a market cap of $58.28 billion, 58. The, the biggest of the three. Really? Yeah, I, I know. You said per- Chubb, I the one you hear about the least, probably. It's yeah, the least advertised. They're flying under the radar. But they're very popular. They're chubbing along. Um, they're excellent. Like, the quality, they're renowned for great quality. Like, if you have a claim, they pay it immediately. They review it, I mean, super quick and, and in full. You know, they never chintz you. Uh, well, I got to go with Chubb then because, like, I don't know. I had a claim with my homeowners and. And I just got done, and I just said, why don't you just tell me you're loaning me the money? <laughs> so, uh, okay, Chubb was founded in New York City in 1882 by Tom Chubb. <laughs> Tom Chubb. <laughs> and his son, little Percy Chubb. Chubby Chubb. Chubb. Chubby Chubb. Percy Chubb. Chubby Percy Chubb. Chubb. Percy Chubb, that's an awesome name. What was that, that, what was that bit about the other week about if you have a strange name? You're, yeah, you're yeah, you're, you're, you could have founded a business, yeah. Maybe like yeah, you were made fun of so much that you're just you're I'm like, gonna get the like, I'm gonna you. be rich. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. I I totally believe it because every element is someone with a weird name. <laughs> yeah, why well, discover an element? You with the Smith name. You go on with your Smithness. <laughs> All right. So Tom Chubb and his son Little Percy uh, created a partnership, and they called it Chubb and Son. Chubb All right. And, son. <laughs> <laughs> and they but, weren't super creative back then. They're just like, all right. The, but the idea was, uh, they they had a specific niche, and that was to insure uh, ships and cargo. Oh my god, okay? that's great! Yeah. And so they were, uh, they gradually built up a reputation uh, as as uh, a really well respected maritime insurer. You know, they they only started with and like a hundred thousand dollars to insure. Uh, ten different cargos or something like that. Really, they yeah. started with a hundred grand. Um, 
So, uh, they, but but people liked the way they operated a good service, you know, and and were reliable to pay out. Yeah, that's a, uh, well. I mean, it's important. Like I think customers for life are made when things go wrong, right? Like everybody can be a great salesperson when everything goes right, but <laughs> when your house is on fire, or if they're there and they're responsive and they take care of you, that's that goes a long way. Yeah. Oh, it's huge. And then you tell friends, right? You know. Yeah. I, I mean, you got to go with Chubb. There's a Obviously. lot of in, in in business almost across the board in the United States today. There's a big push and shove between, um, you know, suppliers, middlemen, and retailers, and and it's about you know, uh, paying on time. Yeah, you know? I want to pay uh, as slowly as I can, and I want everyone else to pay quickly. You're right, a hundred percent. That's the battle, and. You know, th there are a very few who have decided I'm going to go the opposite way and I'm going to pay immediately because nobody is used to anyone with that attitude and it makes them exceptional. So, right. And then sometimes that works because everyone's like, I want the guy who pays immediately. You know, I'm going to hire that guy. Or, You're right. Or You're 100 percent right. Uh, uh, I'm not right. that guy right now, but I want to be. I aspire right. to be the guy. That would make <laughs> sense. So it does make you or stand not, out. I'm not going to hire that guy, but I'm. I'm well, you're going to have them as a vendor. Like right. you want them as a customer because you know you're going to get paid. It's manageable cash flow, and then you're going to give them better discounts probably down the line. Like hey, they're, they're probably. But gonna you get have to shot. weigh that against the cost of having that extra working capital in your business. You're right. So it. it I don't know what the answer is, but you can see that it could work either way. Um, I was surprised with how many companies just s exist on cash flow. They're not really profitable. They thought you thought they were profitable, but when 2008 hit, how many businesses were out of business in like a month? Oh right, yeah. You mean how the loss of liquidity? Yes. Right. It. it, it they. They say yeah. When the tide is out, you can see who's naked. Oh wow. Right? That's, I like that. <laughs> There's so, a lot of naked people, right? Yeah, oh my gosh, naked. in 2008, 2009, 2007. Amazing. You'd think they'd have a couple years stowed away, but no. No, right. There were a lot a lot of bad ones. I mean, we even GM would be included in that. So uh, Chubb began to expand. Uh, and in the 20s, uh, Chubb started underwriting a variety of different policies, um, insuring property and casualty, and then insuring airplanes. Today, Chubb is the largest property and casualty insurer in the United States. Oh, and I can just tell so, you that that's the hardest test to pass for life insurance. What? The prop PNC. It's, oh, in, it's impossible. Uh, oh, for life insurance? Yeah, I have what? a life license, but I didn't pass it. Uh, wait, now PNC is separate from life insurance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that, that PNC test is, is like a homeowner's... Yeah, that test is harder. Like I, I told uh, you another one, A D and D. Oh yeah, accidental, accidental death, death and dismemberment. That sounds problem. like a band. Yeah, that's, that's metal. I have ADD. That's metal. <laughs> yeah, A C D C. Yeah, A D and D. I have ADD. It's an ointment, isn't that? A L A or A and D ointment. Okay. All right. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I used to like Dungeons and Dragons. All right, I never was good at it. You were good at it. No. How do you be good at it? What? I wasn't it's like good at it. Some people have really good dungeons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word on that. <laughs> and then kick ass That's dragons. Weird. That's <laughs> how it works, Tom. Uh, like well, good, dungeons. Yeah, so yeah. good dungeons right. and kick ass dragons. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kirk um, Nelson, I'll give him a plug. He was our valedictorian, I think. Now, here's the interesting thing that Chubb did that the other two did not do. Uh, Chubb was. Founded in New York City, as I said, and and it was always based in New York City, always HQ'd until last year, until 2015. Oh my goodness! They did a tax inversion. We oh, we talked that about before, that, yes, right. And that's that's like um, where you can, uh, according to uh, U.S. law, like if you do a certain, if you're acquired right. and you do a certain amount of business. In another country, you can relocate your headquarters to that country and then pay your taxes to that country, except for you, you're still going to have to pay taxes on the business that you do in the United States, mm -hmm. but your main corporate tax will be in, in the new country. And so what they did is they relocated it 
to Zurich, Switzerland, the headquarters, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, which the is home. a much lower tax. The home of low taxes. It's like Delaware for the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that and Ireland. Oh, Ireland's good? Ireland's really low. I'm yeah. a, I want to move there. It's I'll like run 10%. your open a plant there. I want to go to no, Russia's also really low, but try and do business there. Wouldn't I don't want know. to go to Russia. Yeah, <laughs> they know could about just that. take they'll come in and take it over. Exactly. Like, just like <laughs> yeah. you make too much money, mine now. Putin like your business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. You give to Putin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you give to Putin or we hockey fight you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that inversion saved them a lot of money. You know, because they're paying a much lower tax rate. That's a good investment move, and, even and though so Obama hates it. They're right? the only ones who did that, and they're also the only stock that went up. Okay. I don't think it's cool. Well, that's, I mean, because you're saying it's hard to find a return on your investment, right? If you can't. However, maybe the stock went up a little too much. Let's look at the numbers. Oh. The P.E. is 16.67. Now, that's a normal kind of P.E. for most companies, but for... Uh, these beaten down insurers, it's high. I mean, we, we just saw that MetLife is nine and uh, Prudential is seven. Correct. So 16.67 is kind of out of whack with this. Out of whack, out of whack with the current situation. Right. Even if you do believe uh, Chubb is a superior business, that, that still seems generous, that PE. Okay, and the dividend is 2.13%, which is decent but lower than the others. ROIC, 7.86%, which is higher than the others, and, and that's good. Uh, but uh, actually, it's not higher than Prudential. Prudential no. It's right there with Prudential. So, uh, you know, not very good, not, not in any way justifying that kind of PE. Net debt to equity is 32.2%, which is perfectly good, but it's still a little higher than the others. Um. This is really good. Earnings per share expected to increase 14.6%. Okay, now that's very nice. But, but still, the value is way out of whack with MetLife, where the earnings per share is expected to go up 19.25%. And, uh, you know, the PE is just so much lower, and you get a bigger dividend. And the balance sheet's better. So this one is too expensive, any way you cut it. I mean, I, I do think that they are uh, a good company, and they have an excellent reputation, and uh, they they do make uh, better margins than the other two, but it's just too expensive. I think if all right, if if the forces align and there is an increase in the interest rate, MetLife's the winner here. I would agree with that. Uh, although I would say Prudential is very close. I I, I would like. You know, I would like them both in an environment where rates. You are would buy both of them, probably. Okay. If I had to pick one, I would be <clears throat> MetLife. Though I agree with you. So, you know, we talked about some insurance. Uh, this isn't. Th these are kind of like mainstream insurance companies. Yeah, it wasn't sexy. It wasn't a sexy show today, but it was not necessarily. Wait till you get to reinsurance, man. Yeah, then re, re, re now we're, Then we'll really be showing some legs. <laughs> 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 All right, so that's funny. Uh, that was sexy. We're in our hot studio, and and, and I think we're going to leave pretty soon. I think I hope so before <laughs> I collapse. Yeah. So uh, tonight we're or this morning rather we're all out of funny money. Thanks uh, for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Tom Henry. I'm Matt Wolfarth. Have a good one. <laughs>